My name is Marissa Davidson, and for my pediatric in-service, I will be talking about the medication Alprostadil and its use in congenital heart defects. And here are the learning objectives for this presentation. I'll start with a brief background on congenital heart disease and the role of alprostadil therapy. And then I'll cover just some key drug information for alprostadil. And finally, I'll discuss one study about a possible adjunct therapy to prevent a common side effect of alprostadil. So why is this topic relevant? Well, congenital heart disease, or CHD, is the most common type of birth defect and is a major cause of death in pediatrics, especially in those with congenital abnormalities in general. So the exact cause of CHD is not fully understood, but is often due to a number of factors. Um, some common risk factors include genetics, such as trisomy 21, and maternal exposure to drugs and toxins, as well as infections. Congenital heart disease uh, can then be further classified as either acyanotic or cyanotic, with cyanosis being a bluish discoloration of skin due to excessive lack of oxygen. Um, and this bluish color most often presents on toes, fingers, and face. So the focus of this presentation will be on cyanotic defects, as this is where alprostadil treatment plays a role. I won't go into too much detail on the pathophysiology or anatomy of those defects, but one key point to note is the ductus arteriosus, or DA, that plays a role in fetal blood circulation. Since the fetus does not use his or her lungs, um, oxygen is received through the mother's placenta, blood is from the right ventricle um, shunted to the aorta, bypassing the lungs. Then, after birth, um, exposure to high levels of oxygen cause the duct to close. And there are a number of different cyanotic heart defects that rely on the duct remaining open in order to maintain circulation. So as the duct closes, symptoms start to appear and become more apparent and include, obviously, cyanosis, uh, increased rate and work of breathing, and tachycardia as well. And for these type of defects that rely on a patent or open a ductus arteriosus, therapy involves keeping the duct open, um, and that's done with prostaglandins. So if cyanotic heart defects are suspected, and certainly if they're confirmed at birth, prompt treatment is necessary. And this mainly consists of supplemental oxygen and prostaglandin E1 infusion. And prostaglandin infusion is not a permanent fix and is more beneficial as a bridge therapy until cardiac surgery can be performed. So that brings us to alprostadil, which is simply synthetic prostaglandin E1. Um, prostaglandin E1 is a vasodilator, and it does this by its direct effects on vascular and ductal smooth muscle. Um, so the brand name for alprostadil for this particular use is Prostin VR. Uh, there are other brand names and dosage forms of alprostadil used in the treatment of erectile dysfunction, but as an IV infusion, its only indication is the maintenance of ductal patency on neonates. And so again, alprostadil is only useful in those defects dependent on ductal shunting for oxygenation, such as pulmonary atresia or tetralogy of Fallot. So alprostadil is metabolized by the kidneys to an active metabolite. It takes only about 30 minutes for full effect to be seen, and it has a rapid half-life of elimination of anywhere from seconds to a few minutes. Alprostadil is also highly protein-bound at about 80% to albumin, and after stopping infusion of alprostadil, the duct will begin to close again, and this happens within about one to two hours. So prostadil is available as 1 ml ampules of 500 micrograms per ml solution. The, the ampules should be stored in the refrigerator until use, and then they should be diluted to a maximum concentration of 20 micrograms per ml 
However, the Institute for Safe Medication Practices recommends a concentration of half of that, so 10 micrograms per ml for neonates. When preparing alprostadil for administration, uh, you should avoid direct contact of undiluted medication to any plastic, as it'll interact and cause sort of a hazy or cloudy solution to form. Alprostadil is administered by continuous IV infusion into a large vein, or alternatively via an umbilical artery catheter. Initial dosing for this medication is 0.05 to 0.1 micrograms per kg per minute, then titrated to therapeutic response, which is defined as just an increase in oxygenation status. And the lowest effective dose should be used, and maintenance infusions are typically seen in the range of 0.01 to 0.4 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Adverse effects of alprostadil infusion are typically either cardio or respiratory related. Um, cardiovascular effects of this drug include flushing and either an increase or decrease in heart rate or blood pressure. Respiratory effects include just general flu-like symptoms as well as cough, congestion, etc. Um, the most notice, notable side effect here is apnea, which relates to the black box warning for this medication. And that is that apnea is experienced by about 10% of neonates that receive alprostadil for congenital heart disease. And this occurs especially in those neonates that were less than 2 kilograms at birth. That apnea usually presents within the first hour of this drug administration. Um, and should monitor respiratory status throughout the infusion and should only be used where ventilator assistance is immediately available. So monitoring for alprostadil therapy includes oxygenation status, blood pressure, heart rate, and other vitals. And again, closely monitoring for apnea during that first hour of treatment. And if treatment is expected to last more than 120 hours total, should also monitor for other complications such as antral hyperplasia and gastric outlet obstruction. So that concludes the drug information portion of this presentation. So now I will briefly discuss one study that looked at a possible treatment of apnea that occurs with prostaglandin infusion. So this was a prospective double-blinded placebo-controlled trial that randomized 42 neonates with ductal-dependent congenital heart defects to receive either aminophilin or placebo as an adjunctive therapy to an alprostadil infusion. And the thought was that aminophilin, which stimulates respiration, would decrease the incidence of apnea in patients receiving prostaglandins. So both study groups were similar in their gestational age, birth weight, and there was no significant difference in terms of their cardiac diagnoses. Patients were then given either aminophilin as a bolus and then every eight hours for 72 hours, or placebo, as well as a prostaglandin E1 infusion and were all closely monitored in, in the NICU. So in general, aminophilin reduced the number of apnea episodes as well as the need for intubation. Only two apneic episodes were reported in the aminophilin group compared to 11 in placebo group. No patients receiving aminophilin required intubation for their apnea compared to six patients receiving placebo. Both groups had one patient that required intubation that was not related to apneic episodes, but this result was not significant. There were also no significant side effects reported with aminophilin, although three infants were noted to have irritability as a minor side effect. So in conclusion, alprostadil infusion is the mainstay of therapy for neonates that have ductal dependent uh, heart defects until surgery can be performed. The most common adverse effect of this medication is apnea, 
and this requires close monitoring during the time of infusion. Literature suggests that aminophthalin is useful in preventing apneic episodes in these patients, as well as avoiding the need for intubation and its associated complications. Um, but regardless of whether or not aminophthalin is used, um, respiratory and oxygenation status should be monitored closely during alprostadol therapy in all neonates.